Federico Valverde is going from promising player to world star incredibly fast, and his life story will leave you in awe. Let's get started. Valverde was born in Montevideo, the capital of Uruguay, and the road to football opened for him right away. His parents belonged to the middle class and did not object their son's hobby. The boy never asked mom and dad for toys, but what he really wanted was football. From childhood, Fede was nicknamed El Pajarito, which means bird in Spanish. The reason for that was easy. Frugo, floating dribbling, that Valverde demonstrated in his work with the ball. At the age of 10, the Uruguayan was invited to the Peñarol Club Academy. By the way, Liverpool striker Darwin Nunez took his first steps in football there as well. The club immediately noted Federico's strength, good coordination, elegant technique, excellent intelligence and reading the game. But four years passed and a difficult period has come to Valverde. He started at Peñarol in a 7A side play, and when he moved to the U14 group, he had to prove himself on a full-size pitch. Fede was a small midfielder who did not have a large mass and strong muscles. Therefore, his physique played against him in a wider space. His peers were physically stronger. They easily pushed Valverde away from the ball, overtook him and won all duels against him. The boy disappeared and quickly lost his earned place in the U14 team. Soon, Pengaroy went to a youth tournament in Brazil and Federico went with the team, but he was almost not given a chance to play. He was constantly benched and was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. After that, his mom, via her acquaintance with the head of Pengaroy's scouting department, Nestor Gonzalez, asked him to influence the head coach and asked that her son be given a chance to rehabilitate himself. They did find an approach to Valverde. Youth coach Chueco Perdomo took Fede under his wing as soon as he made his way to the U15. The manager wanted to try the kid in a 4-3-3 formation, and the boy got inspired when he realized that he was believed in again. Valverde improved his physical fitness, his speed, jumps and work with the body. The only negative was that Federico didn't like to defend on the pitch. He wanted to play below forwards to avoid unnecessary defense duties. As a result, Perdomo convinced Valverde that the central midfielder position would be optimal for him. Fede's career took off. He made his debut for Peñarol's first team, playing two matches in the Uruguayan Primera, and at the age of 17, Real Madrid came after him. A preliminary contract was signed, but Valverde couldn't join Los Blancos until he came of age. So, he finished the season at Peñarol and won the league title with the team. By the way, few people know it, but Federico began having serious breathing problems at that time, which jeopardized his career. Valverde visited a phoniatrician to treat his vocal cords and lungs. The recovery course went well, and only after that did Valverde fly to Spain. Real immediately sent him to their farm team Castilla. The Uruguayan midfielder played in Segunda B, Spain's fourth division. But he knew success didn't always come quickly. Fede did a great job at that level and earned the recognition of coach Santiago Solari. A good season paid the way to the FIFA U20 World Cup in Korea for Valverde, where he won the Adidas Silver Bowl as the tournament's second best player. The following season, Real Madrid coaches wanted to test Federico at a more serious level in Primera and sent him on loan to Deportivo La Coruña. This step turned out to be ambiguous for Valverde since the team was relegated to Segunda at the end of the season, and he wasn't noted for any effective actions in 25 matches. But still, Fede matured and tempered his character even more. His debut in the Uruguayan national team also took place around the same period. Valverde started in an away match against Paraguay and scored in the 76th minute. The Sky Blues won and, according to the South American qualification results, reached the 2018 World Cup. It was expected that Federico would go to the World Cup, but a sudden knee injury ruined everything. Valverde did not have time to recover and was out of the squad. However, by not going to the World Cup, Fede got more time to make his long-awaited breakthrough at the Real Madrid first team. When the tournament in Russia ended and all the internationals went on a late vacation, Valverde worked hard at the training center like crazy. Los Morang's head coach Julian Lopetegui couldn't ignore his efforts and took the Uruguayan to the preseason training camp in the United States. 
Federico's debut for Real Madrid took place in a friendly game against Manchester United. Lopetegui felt that the guy needed to be included in the squad for the season, and when the club loaned central halfback Mateo Kovacic, the doubts about Valverde dispelled for the coaching staff. He remained and would be in a rotation. Fede's first official match for Real Madrid took place in the Champions League against Victoria Plzen. The midfielder got 46 minutes on the pitch and took part in a scoring attack. Madrid won 2 1. But Real Madrid's results that season left much to be desired and Lopetegui was sacked. Fortunately for Valverde, the team was led by Santiago Solari, with whom Fede had already worked at Castilla. And when the team was headed by Zinedine Zidane, the prospects for the Uruguayan were not shaken. In the 2019-20 season, Valverde became an integral part of the Real Madrid system and had a hand in winning the league title and the Spanish Super Cup. The pattern became obvious. The team performed worse without him than with him. Federico's young glow was urgently needed against the backdrop of veterans, Toni Kroos and Luka Modric's periodic injuries. Progressing, Manchester United became interested in Federico, but Madrid worked ahead of the curve. The club extended the contract with the young prodigy until 2025 and protected themselves with a release clause of 750 million euros. Two years later, Valverde had played enough to get a second improved contract until 2027, and the clause increased to 1 billion euros so that other top clubs wouldn't even think about looking towards Fede. Valverde continues to improve, and he has over 150 matches in the Real Madrid shirt now. He flawlessly fulfills all of Carlo Ancelotti's tasks and shows himself equally well, both in the center of midfield and on the wing, where he also plays from time to time. Recently, the Uruguayan can boast of winning the Champions League and the European Super Cup, as well as a successful personal life, which is also important. Fede is stating Uruguayan model and TV presenter Mina Bonino. There is a great understanding between them and they love to tease each other. For example, before the Spanish Super Cup semi-finals last season, the girl texted Federico that if he didn't score against Barcelona, she would fire their chef and cook for him himself. Knowing that cooking was not his companion's forte, Valverde hit the blow ground on it and made Mina jump for happiness in front of the TV. And Fede loves to troll his girlfriend as well. Ahead of the Champions League final against Liverpool, he honestly admitted that he was ready to sell his wife for the sake of winning the tournament. The girl appreciated the reciprocal joke of her lover. Such exchanges of jokes are not uncommon for them, but the most important thing is that Federico and Mina love each other insanely. And this is reflected in their only child, San Benicio, among other things. Valverde has achieved almost everything that a footballer can dream of at a young age, but he doesn't stop and knows that there is an unfinished business ahead, namely participation in the World Cup. In November, he should go to Qatar with the Uruguayan national team, and we want to believe that this time no injury will be an obstacle for him. Right now, perhaps the best central midfielder of the near future who combines versatility, hard work and simply good human qualities is blossoming before us. Keep watching Federico Valverde, guys, he will shock our world many times. Guys would be very grateful if uh, all those who continue to watch us without subscription subscribe to our channel. Let's fix that. Also, drop us a like and tell us whose are the stories you'd like to hear in our next videos. Thank you all for watching and bye.